um, um, either as uh, an abject victim of, of police violence or as a controversial figure in the midst of the LA rebellion um, or as, as someone who um, ha has been part of a longer conversation about whether policing is racist or not and what is the responsibility of black people um, in relation uh, to uh, the community. But, but in all of those versions of Rodney King, um, there's no understanding of you as a kid who loved fishing, a kid who loved to, to swim, a kid right. whose favorite pastime in sports was baseball. Yeah. And I would even say something that most people don't know, you're a firefighter. Oh, sorts. yeah. That's right. So tell us, tell us a little bit about, about you as a person, aside from, so from the public figure that most people think they know. Well, I'm just a down-to-earth guy, and, um, you know, and I love life. Um, it's, um, my childhood was, was a real uh, a good experience. I grew up in a neighborhood where it's pretty much a mixed neighborhood. Um, did a lot of fishing with my pops. Uh, we've seen a lot of fish fries. Um, did a little hunting also with him. Had the experience to hunt with him. Um, I wouldn't trade the experience of, of being Rodney as a, as a kid for nothing. It was, uh, it was a good experience. It was a learning experience also, you know. Tell us about some of those lessons. Um, well, for us, um, I can remember when me and my three brothers had our, it was four of us all together, but we had our, it was, this was a little rough one here. So I'm gonna start with the rough first. Um, we you know you get older and you get the chance to go out on your own. So me and my uh, three brothers was out, and we would, I think that day we had went uh, uh, swimming, swimming in the, in, um, in the little, uh, in a dam, uh, uh, it was called a Santa Fe Dam or something like that, I believe. Handsome Dam. Hans no, not Handsome Dam. It was Devil's Gate's Dam in La Cunada in Pasadena. They heard a little bit about Devil's Gate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, they know the story. They don't know anyway, the whole story. Tell us. We were swimming. And, um, you know, I'm so used to uh, being around different nationality of people at that age because my mom was house, did house cleaning in the daytime and my dad did house cleaning in the daytime with her, but he did the buildings at night. So they would take us over to the you know, to the, to the uh, employer's house sometimes during the week because we were young, too young to be in school sometimes. So I had experience of being around, you know, uh, whites and uh, at an early age and playing with the kids and enjoying, enjoying mm -hmm. the company. Mm -hmm. So one day, as we got older, we was able to go out on our own. And that particular day, we went up to the, to, um, to the lake I was telling you about. Um, and so... When we went up there, the guys was playing frisbees, and uh, we were swimming in a little mud hole. So I guess they were starting to get bored of what they were doing. They were about 18, 19, you know, and 20. They were, little, they were older than us, because we were like eight, nine, eight, nine, and 10, I'd say. And so I seen this guy tying up a rope, tying this uh, rock up with his belt. He, and uh, he was fumbling with it trying to get it on there. And so the guy gets the rock, on, the rock on there and he starts swinging his belt around, swinging his belt around, and they start cursing and stuff like that. And so I'm watching him, my other brother, I'm always the one that noticed something that's about to happen for some reason. So I, <laughs> for some reason. And so I, what I did was uh, I got out of the water real slow and my, left my other two brothers swimming. And I was so scared because I seen the other guy, the other guy coming down to the lake with the rock, and, and on the on the belt that he had, and he got in that water with my brother, with one of my with my oldest brother, and he tried to get him so he could uh, put the tie him up with that rock and that rope, that mm. belt and the rope. And anyway, my other my youngest brother saw him what he was doing. He went down to the bottom of the lake and got some sand and threw it in the guy's eyes, and uh, the guy just started screaming and hollering and. That's how they got away. So when my other, oldest brother caught up with me, he said, why did you leave us? He, uh, you, you, he called me all kind of names he could. <laughs> why did you leave us, you little punk? And it wasn't punk, but he was, you know, he was cussing at a, <laughs> He was cussing me out. And I felt so bad because I felt helpless. And I was just so scared, you know. Um, first time we, we had went out, you know, as, as uh, three, little, three brothers. And we got, ran into that kind of, um, you know, that, that 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 brutality like this is that. a coming of age moment for racism for you yeah right? it was a coming it was a coming that's just what it was it yeah. dawned on me hey this is you're black and they're white and you know? i wanted to read uh what i thought was one of the more moving passages um 
as you describe, actually what's happening before the camera is rolling. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, this is what you described. You said, um, but that was not their intent, and that was made brutally clear to me when one of the officers suddenly kicked me with his boot in the side of my face, mm -hmm. smashing my draw, jaw. It felt like someone had taken a baseball bat to my head. Before I could even register that unbearable pain, one of the other officers slammed me in the lower leg with his baton. I heard a crack and was so damn surprised when that happened that I immediately pleaded with Melanie, who was, a, who was one of the arresting officers, but who at that point had become kind of your guardian angel, at least in your mind, someone who was, was um, different from the rest.